अच्छा सतीश निकल और सतीश निकल ओके आई एम ऑडिबल ओवर हियर फाइन स्विच ऑन जी अलता सर इधर नौकर रहे जाते हैं तेपला नौकर रहे जाते हैं तेपला दिन नहीं ओके फाइन सो एस्टरडे वी हैव लुक्ड इनटू आर्टी फैक्ट्री राइट एंड वी हैव लुक्ड इनटू अपस्ट्रीम एंड डाउनस्ट्रीम जॉब्स जनरली ऑन ए ऑन ए वेरी व्हाट इस आर कॉल्ड एस ए कन्वेंशनल नोट ओके इट इस नॉट अ प्रैक्टिस यू कैन यू कैन बेस but generally your integration will be one job and deployment or delivery will be other job you will make it as upstream and downstream just because in many projects we might be just doing integration not deployment so in that cases to to reuse whatever you have done we might basically choose multi job scenario okay and it is not very what do you say uh, there is other way of doing it add one more build step in the same job and do the same thing whatever whatever you have done in the other job that will also work but the problem is generally as a convention we try to have different grounds for both of them right okay now let me speak about distributed builds and let me speak about branching strategy right these are two points which i want to speak and uh, tomorrow i'll be covering uh, devops on aws and devops on azure so that's my agenda on overall note okay so first let me start with branching strategy very important right so it is not important to design it it is important to understand it because designing branching strategy will not be our responsibility it will be mostly dev community's responsibility right so what is a branching strategy now where do we have branches basically branch ekkada untay jenkins lo untaya so we have branches in the jenkins so whenever developer is working on some code on which branch he is supposed to okay whenever we are making releases to our customers on which branch we are supposed to make a release so this is what a branching strategy on its overall note and basically we might have a different job per branch because dev branches are mostly what do you say we do day builds okay when they are integrated into some stable branch we might be doing night builds and then we will have integration branches or system test branches production branches these are all manual jobs they don't automate we have to we will configure the job but you will be manually clicking on build now because that is not automated in many of the companies because of the different pipelines which they have for example i have given it for the testing and testing team has to give the approval so in many companies there might not be an automated fashion wherever the tester sends an approval mail then jenkins will call out automatically that is not possible okay it will be automated when all of your all of your testing is automated all of your testing is automated fine so we will have whenever we create a git what is the branch which you will get okay okay so this is our master branch now basically i am quite sure that most of you might know or might have gone through agile classes or some of you are due to go to agile classes in agile classes what in agile what would happen is we will have smaller milestones for every two weeks we will be giving one release to the customer every or every one week or every three weeks depending on your organization stuff so i can't make every release on the master branch i can't make every release on the master branch so what i would do is i'd have one more branch over here which i would call it as release branch so on this branch whenever you make a customer release out of this branch so is it only one branch if you have three customers you might have three release branches so let us assume that we have three customers tcs infosys and wipro so you might have release_tcs and release_wipro and release_infosys 
those are specific releases which you give to a customer but if your application is much like google chrome then you will have only one release branch because everyone has the same installation so it depends on the nature of your product whatever you are developing so you'll have release branch and <coughs> before giving to the release okay what is the kind of testing which you are supposed to do we will do acceptance testing or to be very specific we call it as user acceptance testing and in the admin world that 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 is famous with the world called as staging an environment before live environment we call it as staging so you can either call the next branch as staging branch or uat branch based out of your organizational convention so we have one more branch over here which is i'll call it as uat environment now whenever we are developing the product will there be only one team or will there be multiple teams there will be multiple teams working on it right and there might be and basically all of the teams have to integrate their work done into one branch yes or no so let us assume that we are all developing ui people on the call are developing the back end java code so to make an application ui is important as well as java is important but when you are developing you will be focused on ui and when people on the web are developing they'll be focused only on the on the java part of it that's that's the whole point so for doing those kind of integrations we'll have one more branch which we generally call as a integration branch so these are all your git branches right wonderful now this is generic stuff this is this is not related to any team this is all teams work okay and now let us assume that you have three or four teams so per team you will have one branch per team you will have one branch okay so <coughs> let me call it as sprint branch okay so all are straight lines they're not making sense right i'll tell you what happens first we'll have only master branch okay we might not have any code in there but we will do git branch git checkout minus b release commit release or push release git push origin release and then from our from release we'll be creating one more branch so these are all related in this fashion so that's the direction all of the branches are created like this first you will have master and then you would have sprint branches all right till here clear this is an empty folder there is nothing in here the code has not been started code will not be developed on any of these branches in this branches no developer is supposed to write even a single line of code whatever code that they are developing should be on their individual team sprint branches individual teams sprint branches now let us assume that we have three teams a b and c so i will have i'll be writing it as a b and c to be very simple a b and the last branch c so if your company have 100 teams then you will have 100 branches of these sort okay so whenever developers work they commit the code to either a or b or c so you will be configuring your day builds on the branches team branches a b and c okay so we have written the day builds game of life day builds right so game of day of life day builds will be on a branch a b or c if you have three teams you might have three different jobs because day builds are supposed to give quality or feedback to your developers okay so whenever you are building a you will be putting uh, an email notification only to the a team b c but on these branches all developers and team leaders okay make sense right <coughs> now let us assume i am developer of a branch i write some code i commit it to a day build happens everything is good okay daily night at nine o'clock or some sometime like that what i do is i will merge 
all of the code that is being written over here on to sprint branch from a to sprint b to sprint and c to sprint so nine o'clock i have done it 12 o'clock i am going to have a night build so night build will not be on a b or c night build will be on your sprint branch okay and whenever i am saying sprint branch sprint branches will generally be like sprint will have number or name sprint one sprint two sprint three and all of that so for you to understand what this print convention is just wait for the agile uh, classes to be happening so the work which is done by your dev teams daily will be integrated onto one branch which is called as a sprint branch now this print branch will be given release to your testing team when they are okay then those changes get into integration branch and when integration testing is done everything is looking good then it will go into the uat branch if uat is good and we are okay with to go to production then we will have we'll go to the release branch and from that release branch your customer will get a release this is how it is now there is one more concept called as task branch or topic branch generally when you go to interviews you might come across this terminology where people say task branch or topic branch <coughs> what does that mean is let us assume i am a developer of a I'm a developer of A. I am not supposed to directly work on A. From A, I have to take a branch with my issue number or requirement number or whatever number it is. So from let us assume that I am fixing a issue. So Jira bug number is one, two, three. So from the A branch, I'll be creating one more branch where I will be fixing this issue, which I'll be calling it as uh, uh, issue one, two, three. So which means that this branch is consists of release which fix for one to three when i test it locally when everything is working then i will merge it to a our responsibility starts from a not from topic branches okay task branch one two three we don't build that is not devops responsibility that is developers responsible he has to ensure that everything in there is working locally tested okay he does all of the stuff our responsibility starts when he merges onto the team branch, not task branch. That is a statement which you need to make in your interview. So what are the kinds of branches which you have spoken about? We have release branches. Okay. Release branch. And then basically depending on the stage of your project, you might have different project, different branches. UAT. UAT is user acceptance testing branch. And then integration branch. Okay. And then sprint branches. Sprint branches, there will be multiple sprint branches. For example, for every two weeks, you have one sprint. It might start with sprint one after two weeks it would uh, they will be creating one more branch which is called a sprint two sprint three sprint four sprint three is generally these sprint branches are used for giving demos to your customer right so from there you will have team branches and many companies directly work on team branches and there are some companies who don't allow developers to directly work on team branches because they have some process over there so then they are supposed to create topic branches or task branches get low in the good okay so as a developer developers responsibility is committing to branch a or branch b or branch a, depending on his team from there every merge is done by us once it goes to the sprint branch from there see let us assume sprint one is finished do we need to submit those changes to the integration branch yes so sprint one to integration this much this is done by devops okay and now when the integration team says that yeah we are good you you can uh, proceed then merging integration to uat our responsibility merging uat to release yes our responsibility okay and these merges are supposed to be smooth let us assume that there is a merge conflict we don't fix anything we just send a mail to the dev community or team leaders or product owners of whatever it is and then say that we are getting this issue can you help us resolve this if there is a merge conflict on that branch again the thorough testing should be done if there is no merge conflict good generally you will not see merge conflicts because no one is changing these branches if you see no developer is directly working on them okay all the work is done on the individual branches and then they come over here so you 99.99 percent of the cases you will not see merge conflicts okay you will see majority of the merge conflicts at this place 
team a merging to sprint team b merging to sprint team c merging to sprint three different works are coming together and sometimes when they work on the same files you will see you will be seeing merge conflicts and those should be resolved by the teams itself okay we'll take the help of the team okay for every team there will be a product owner or a scrum master or whatever it is we will take the help of them and then we'll resolve it so is this the only branching strategy no this is the most popular in agile world so let us assume you have joined a company where they are not following agile so branching model might not be this they might just create customer release branches and developers might directly work on release branches okay is this the only way no it is the most popular way okay so basically all of this branch creations right till sprint branch and team branch we have to create it that is the reason why we have learned that command git checkout minus b and push that branch into the git server git push origin and all of that because developers are not supposed to do it in many organizations it should be either us or their team leads or uh, product owners or scrum masters who are supposed to create branches the only branches which they can create are task branches or topic branches the only branches which your developers are supposed to create are task branches or topic branches that's it this is one of the one of the branching strategy anni ilage untaya might not be but this is the most popular one and also in the jenkins book i have given one uh, one um, branching strategy which is almost like this with the different names which is almost like this with the different names okay i have seen people creating uh, not only integration branches they create something like system test branch performance test branch and load test branch also so that the those testings will happen there okay so there is not a sim, uh, not not basically there is not this is not the only standard or whatever you do in your company is not the only standard there are many different approaches which people tend to follow it is basically the release process that that mandates this okay but remember in any of the process the standard which you should follow is there are some branches where you just merge the code you don't change the code there you don't change the code there for example we have given release to the customer a bug has been reported okay you should not be directly working on release at least issue a ticket from that release point out to some of the integration branch okay merge your stuff to the integration branch you have to go through all of these stages of testing if you directly make your changes on the release that means that you are skipping all the testing okay so but it depends on your company some companies are very strict on that some companies don't even worry about it it's okay just give a release to our customer we are happy okay so it depends on the nature of your organization but ideally you should not be making or your developer should not be working on any of the branches which i have mentioned over any of the branches which i have mentioned over. the only branches which they are allowed to at a max is sprint branch sometimes developer might work or uh, whenever the merge conflicts come the team leaders might change the code directly on the sprint branches that's the only last chance after that if they want to do any work they have to take a branch out work there merge the change back okay and this is for a dev process this is for dev project and generally we should be interested in dev project support project might have a different branching strategy support project a project which is not heavily doing uh, development but it does only support activities for example uh, something like a banking application which is already there in the field so their branching strategy might not have these many branches okay then you will have a different strategy so focus on this and also read uh, through the book in which i have given one more branching strategy and every branding branching strategy means that it is a release process how do you make your release to your customers and how do you ensure that all the quality stages have been passed okay so then you could only integration on i have just called it as integration testing in which i am i mean that performance test will be done system test will be done okay and load tests also will be done security testing also if required but there are many companies where they create different branches for that so this is not the only way but this is one of the way okay and all the changes merging back so from sprint branch to all the back stages is our responsibility okay and sprint whenever you are speaking merging of sprint branches that is also generally we don't automate it team does it that is also because what what is that we will tell on a b and c whenever you build 
we will be giving day builds we will build one daily for every one hour i will be building one uh, release and on sprint branch i will tell that daily night at 12 o'clock whatever is there in that i am going to do an idb so bringing changes to till that point is devs responsible from sprint branch merging everything back to the customer branch based out of different phases of your project is our responsibility okay so there is one popular question on what are your day to day responsibilities in jenkins or you are in devops okay so our responsibility holds 30% of our work at least goes into this ci and maintenance of this branches okay and because they bills don't pass daily manakante mana teesukune chinna application lo mvn package eppudu pass out but when you go to the real time when you when you basically hit through the application you might see lot of issues there mvn compile fails because of the merge conflict okay test environment is not right so maintenance of healthy builds is one of our job and it takes 30% of your time it takes 30% of your time and rest of the things are you work on new deployments you work on containerizations that's what a 70% takes so 30% definitely goes into this at a bare minimum 30% la ipothundante you are optimized then. so when i say 30% that is approximately let us assume that you work 10 hours per day 3 years 3 years will definitely go into ca because there will be lots of builds and all the builds will not be successful and you have to ensure that they are being set right okay so what do you do daily in devops okay your first answer is i work on maintenance of continuous integration what are the different things which you see there there are build failures there are merge conflicts okay and sometimes there there might be maintenance of your build machines because c drive might be full yeah temp directories you might need to clean okay environmental uh, issues you have to just look through all of that 30% and next 70% comes on developing new things for any engineer any de any devops engineer 30% goes into maintenance of just ci engine ci and cd pipeline or to maintain jenkins and all of this flow it go it takes 30% of your job and the rest of the 70% you might tell that i am working on new ansible playbook so that as of now our cd is using shell script we want to move it to ansible or we have moved and to ansible for some of the projects and remember this is only one project until unless you don't work for a product based organization you will not be working for one project you will be working for multiple projects so you might be given uh, three or four uh, these kind of teams where you may, might need to maintain three different pipelines so that's how it is in 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 devops until unless you are not working in product based organization you will not have projects you will have assignments so that's when resume if someone bring to me saying that sir what is the project which i need to write don't write about project because we have assignments so assignments could be like build a ci cd pipeline for our project which is developed in java which is an e-commerce project right so we start with ci first and then cd initially we might take the shell script which admins are using and then we convert that and uh, that that stuff into ansible later on your team might say that we want to go to cloud so then we work on terraform and packer so these are the kind of things which you would have you will generally not have projects you will have assignments even in the project if you are working with the same project you will get different assignments you will not be working on what are the functional aspects how does the ui look like you don't do that okay our what our intention is to take the product faster to the market are all the quality metrics met quality gates passing okay are the releases present in the rt factory server okay so and one more thing for every branch which you are seeing over here from sprint branches okay you will have an rt factory repository int underscore game of life uat underscore game of life release underscore game of life these are the repository names how you will create in your rt factory server all right so for every stuff you will have but you will not generally maintain rt factory for team a team b and team c it doesn't make sense because these guys will be building every hour so why do you want to make a release over there you can but it doesn't make sense fine looking good yeah so there is no need for you to remember all of this just go through some just google for branching strategies you will find hell lot of them see what what is uh, the stuff which you are understanding and use it okay and also in the book which i have written about jenkins i have i have uh, 
demonstrated one branching strategy you can go through that so whatever makes sense kaag bote don't try learning 100 and forgetting everything try remembering one and say that this is what our company does no one will ask you saying that why don't why didn't you tried this because everyone who knows devops knows that this branching strategy is not decided by us it is maintained by us we are not the creators of this for us we get suggestions and we create the branches only for sticking this branching strategy you will have a discussion of around months because you want to stick all the customers all the use cases into this whenever you start your project and whenever you want to do uh, the devops sort of works fine okay so let me look at questions now okay one more thing uh, yesterday i think i uh, shared you the link right did you got that github.com slash qt devops okay just log in uh, with your uh, account and in here one minute I'll, I'll look at the questions one minute yes qt hyphen devops okay so in here basically there are some issues okay i have created all the issues over here because i want you guys to participate okay <clears throat> these are uh, the issues that are reported by some of our friends okay so you can log in into this and just say a watch here so whenever someone raises an issue you will get an email okay indulo meeku telisini solve cheyin telini at least if you know try to give some suggestion there if you don't know at least look at what is the issue okay so it will give you a benefit of if you if you don't know the issues you will see what the people are trying around okay so one of the issue that is reported is sonar key error in jenkins i am not getting the link okay so whatever sonar key plugin which i have tried basically he is doing uh, the stuff and then there is a sonar cube link and he is unable to access it what could be the issue because the issue was, so it has never went into sonar cube probably okay so you can just write your comments over there try this or you can share your screenshot by dragging and dropping and do this participate in this you would be learning a lot than what you are doing in isolation okay endukante kontha mandi illaku veltharu some of the people work mostly at home or some of the people basically are working in office so whenever you are free if you know some issue just try to solve it okay and also the solutions which are put by quality thought are also will be here or the resolution will be here so basically once the issue is being done okay um, either the reporter or me will be closing this issue so then you can look this and it will slowly become like stack overflow So you'll be seeing the issues. Go over here, search for issues, and then you will find it out. So I, I have done this not in the mail because I want your participation over here. Okay, at least for the issues which you know. If you don't know, just leave it. But just see what are the what is the resolution for that. So in this process, this will help you in lot of uh, understanding lot of issues which people are seeing. Okay, some might be very small. Some might be like I am unable to um, basically install Vagrant. Probably your BIOS settings doesn't support it. As simple as that. some might be really complicated scenarios so okay so i want your participation over here if if uh, basically it doesn't make sense if if only quality thought and the reporter is working it is same as mail okay participation ante wo me reply cheyamanna uddesham kada at least chotta unnam if you know yeah reply it it could be right or wrong it's okay fine okay na let me look into questions uh please explain the task branch concept once as i said task branch is a branch that is created from your team branch on which a individual developer works on fixing either that issue or creating that feature okay so task branch feature branch topic branch these are all the names given 
because you are not supposed to work on team branch directly that's the whole point uh, how can we ensure that the environment variable is environment is available to fix an issue in uh, release one but developers are working on release two developers generally don't work on release two to be very specific they work on sprint branches according to this branching strategy they don't work on release two and uh, release two if you want to make a fix from release one okay then you have to take a branch from release one take a branch from release one then work on it you are not supposed to and you can you are basically whenever you are working you are not supposed to work in uh, directly in your code i will be getting the release one no you have to take customer issue that's a support stuff so support what they do is from release they will create the branches over here okay they do all of this stuff and they trigger all of this test automatically manually they will trigger all of this test then they will push it into the stuff okay so it is it even if the developer is working you might be working on two different branches okay it is not that developer has to work on one branch right he can do git checkout and he can switch between many branches in his uh, in his uh, git so that's how it would work okay but you will never work on uh, um, without taking branches you are not supposed to work directly there so from there you might take a different branch out and then you would you might fix the issue okay how to automate the merging there is no automation of the merging you have to do it manually because automation of merging is not possible because you might get merge conflicts you can't automate any version control system merging is manual because you will get merge conflicts and you want someone who is responsible to fix that merge conflict okay i can automate it i can do anything but if the for example merge conflicts will come when when it will come when the two lines have different content so which should i put it on the top is it the is it the line which is on the left side or on the right side how will i know i can't automate it so it is never automated even if it is possible we want it to be manual because that is code if it was text it's okay one line goes on the top one line comes on the on the bottom it doesn't make much of a difference right so we can't do that followed google to install rt factory in ubuntu 16 getting errors that it cannot install can you share rt factory install document i am using the same document whatever you have been using increase the memory of your system it will never be installed on t2 micro you would require at least 4 gb of ram to make it rt factory work okay so it, it there are memory restrictions for uh, rt factory even in jenkins it might launch but whenever you create some jobs suddenly your ui will become unresponsive and you might not be able to do a lot of the stuff rt factory jenkins and sonar cube are beast guys you need at least 4 gb of ram that's how it is all right so for that reason itself we have learned vagrant right in the vagrant create one at a time you can easily give 4 gb of ram to a vagrant machine do it on vagrant okay or r rupees par ledu anukunte oka ganta create chesukochu man so for 6 rupees per hour you will be getting a decent machine on the cloud or for the people who don't want to even spend that create either uh, uh, azure account you will be getting uh, 200 dollars of credit or create digital ocean account you will be getting 60 dollars of credit there are many ways of doing it google cloud also gives you 300 dollars of credit there also you have virtual machines it doesn't mean that since i am not using in this class you, you are not supposed to you can use anything i need a linux machine that at the end of the day where you create i am not worried right fine my voice is it still breaking can you please draw a branching strategy what was i doing till now yes please refer it in the book there it will be very much visual i can't make uh, the stuff you just if you don't have the book jenkins book just get it uh, the branching strategy is much like that just try to describe your branching strategy okay on which branch who will be working right if you are unable to do it i am okay to tell it again but i don't want to tell it again today i want you to look at different stuff if you don't find it if you are if you are for example if you are not unable to demonstrate your branching strategy then i'll be explaining right so please look at different branching strategies i have given it in the book also fine what is the minimum ram required i would recommend rt factory 4 for rt factory 4 jenkins at least 4 sonar cube is okay with 2 because we generally don't uh, push sonar cube too much all right fine 
from sprint to release any dish, dish issues come which developers are uh, which developers uh, are it's our responsibility i no issue is our responsibility the only responsibility for us is environmental issue the only responsibility for us is environmental issue and now whenever an issue comes a bug will be raised yes or no so in every bug there will be a section called as functional area so saying that uh, i am creating a new order but it is not created so in team a b or c there might be one team who takes care of order management so the issue goes to them it's not our intelligence we don't do that right fine oh artifactory has a new name it, yeah, it, it, it looks good actually <laughs> yeah artifactory server is restarted uh, ip just change your uh, uh, sonar cube server url in your uh, global tools that's it you need not worry about ip changes or if you are jenkins server and uh, sonar cube are on the aws network use a private ip address so that you don't need to change anything you can do any of them right do we need to launch separate server for jenkins sonar cube or artifactory or can we use the same they will never use in the same server in real time for your benefits yes if you have a beast for example i have 8 gb of server i can can i try all of the three on the same machine yes but on uh, in real time never you will not see all of these things in the same server. what will happen if that server fails right so generally we'll never put that okay can you please send me a send soft copy and just just ask satish all right murli ask satish he would be he would be sending it to you it's not i don't uh, basically keep because i'm the most laziest person on, in, in quality thought so i'll forget everything right uh if we close after using one i mean stop then also will be charged okay you will be charged only for storage if you stop because even if you stop you have hard disk that is being in use so you'll be charged for hard disk so just see hard disk prices they are very less it's okay hard disk prices are not that great okay should we also take care of merging sprint one no we don't merge sprint one two and three branches no because every sprint is on a different branch okay so now let us assume that sprint one is finished okay then we will take the new create a new branch from this branch integration branch itself that order creation of branches doesn't go order doesn't change you want to create sprint branch you have to create it from integration branch okay so sprint branch i have to start from integration branch all right it will have all the changes of sprint one because anyway integration branch before creating sprint two was merged from sprint one to integration already so that's how it is yeah uh, please send to all yeah please please do write a mail to satish even after this class i might forget because now i have to start distributed builds and in that trans i'll forget this stuff okay so please do write a mail okay we do need to use uh, sonar cube before build or after build wonderful question but we have to for the sonar cube to work your compilation and test has to be succeeded right because we are seeing coverage code coverage and we are seeing code quality so we have to, whenever you write mvn package sonar colon sonar it will be called after your code has been built tested then it goes to sonar cube right so for just like for package it needs a compilation and test for executing sonar it needs a package and for package it needs a compilation and test so all of these steps happen in sequential order okay we do only merging or anything regarding it regarding it we do many things who is creating branches right so regarding it we do creation of branches okay any issues that are being faced by the dev team saying that i have lost my commit and all of that stuff you might basically being asked to check so these are the kind of things you should face right yeah okay then so just go through this i know this is a tough concept this is this is like a bouncer but this is a required yeah but once you one if you ask if you are working already in a in an office office environment where you are part some part of sdlc that will this will not be that complicated but if you are not working then it might like look like a difficult job so what you can do is just regarding this branching strategies okay 
just put it put it aside for some time and think on the other concepts once you know uh, different other things which you have discussed in jenkins then we can uh, basically then you can go back through what i have spoken today so that it makes sense so for the working class who are already working either in development or testing this should not be a very difficult thing to even visualize but if you are from admin backgrounds you don't work then it it might it might be troublesome but actually okay if you know the process it is simple if you don't know it is not and for the people who don't know agile some of the terminologies which i have used over here like sprint and all of that that might not be making or or sounding too much known to you so just wait till you uh, finish the agile classes and then you can come back and look at this right so that's the reason why i have documented it on the on the book also so you can go through that fine now let me tell a scenario just just you just tell me how do i resolve it our jenkins server is on which machine we have a jenkins server right which we have been using so on which machine i have installed it what is the operating system of the machine where in which i have installed jenkins ubuntu okay but the problem is in my team there is dotnet code also can i build it on ubuntu so what shall i do build one more jenkins server yeah that is an option but unfortunately that is not a decent option because you have two jenkins servers to maintain you have two jenkins servers to maintain so what basically for every uh, let us assume that some of the builds might require red hat server then some of the builds might require red hat server some might require mac servers some might require windows servers but they are all part of your ci how are you going to maintain this so we can't have multiple jenkins servers it is too much of a maintenance so what jenkins does is jenkins gives us a concept called as distributed builds what is it this concept was earlier called as master slave so in in some of the documents you might still see master and slave but now they are not calling it as they are calling it as distributed build so what happens is this is jenkins master your ubuntu server wherever you have jenkins right now and now what you would do is you would choose some other machines you can add as any number of machines which you want these machines i would call it as nodes what are they nodes in the older approach we used to call them as slaves right now we are calling it as nodes if you go to jenkins 1.6 or older versions then then if you refer to the documentation it was called as slave so what you will do is this might be my windows server this might be my red hat so windows okay red hat making sense so now what i will do is i will add all of these servers as nodes to my primary jenkins server and whenever i send a build for dotnet projects i am be sending the build to the windows servers for the projects which require red hat i might be sending it to build on red hat so what i can do right now is i can have different kinds or categories of machines which are present in isolation which acts as nodes to jenkins server now what would happen is did we discuss about something called as executor so if we have two executors two builds can happen in parallel and all of that now what would happen is let us assume that you have two executors per stuff so ubuntu server already has two and then you are adding one more four machines which means four into two eight so total you have 10 executors now so 10 builds can happen in parallel okay so the whole point is you are adding your capacity of your machines not in the same server but by adding other servers this is the whole concept now whenever you build in jenkins saying that i am building a dot net project okay you will say that this project has to be built on windows machine so the project will be sent on to this machine and on this machine the build happens okay and the workspace and all of that stuff will be accessible from here also 
So basically, you get the build onto this machine. Similarly, you want to build on the Red Hat machine. So the build goes and triggers it over this point. And then it comes back and basically shows you what is that it has been built, what are the logs and all of that on your Jenkins server. So now I am having one Jenkins server and then multiple build machines. So what is the advantage of this approach is generally we don't want our Jenkins master to be a most complicated machine. Suddenly our Jenkins master sounds simple. Okay. On Jenkins master in many companies, they don't do they don't do any builds. I'll build a jail. The only work that Jenkins master is supposed to do is send build to other servers or other nodes. Okay. Till now, since we were using the only one Jenkins server, I was using that to build. Now, on the Jenkins machine, what I would do is I'll not build anything. I'll just configure the UI and I'll I'll be giving access to all of that. That's it. But most of the work will be done by these nodes. These nodes. And generally, I have written it as Windows, Red Hat, and Windows or Red Hat, these kind of machines. But generally, you'll have build uh, names based out of your team. E-commerce build server. FinTech build server. That build servers already have the environments what is required for building that stuff. So you need not worry about the, uh, what do you say, uh, maintenance of them, saying that whether it has everything or not. Is the Maven installed there? Is the Tomcat installed there? Nothing. So for us, we have different machines. Now, how do I add these machines to the Ubuntu server? That's the whole point. Okay. Linux to Linux, very simple. Linux to Linux, very simple. Did you remember our steps when I said SSH copy ID, SSH, uh, the whatever I have done for uh, doing SCP yesterday? So just create the same user on all of your Linux servers, and then you can basically create a node via SSH server. That's the simplest thing to do. But Win Linux to Windows is slightly a difficult combination too because in Windows you can't do SSH. Okay, so how am I going to achieve this? Fine. So let us look into now adding one Windows server, okay, to the Jenkins instance, and that Windows server is my laptop. Okay. So one thing to remember whenever you are adding Windows uh, to the server, your server need not your server initially need not to be connected to your uh, uh, node if in your node will start the communication communication will be from node to server that's how it would happen so they might not be in the same network even in that case it would work as long as your node is able to communicate to your server and after that what happens is a java communication is established and then these two speak with each other shall we do that yes now what i would do is let me log in into aws and first let me show you what is configured already i have done configuration of one machine already not one i think yeah one one I think. Okay. 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 Fine. So in manage jenkins okay if you scroll down you would be seeing a section called as manage nodes okay here you can add your nodes here you can add your nodes now if you want to add windows nodes there is a windows service but it works very well within the network if you are working within your office network and if you want to add them it would works very well but unfortunately, if you are working with environments like that, like us, where we have to speak with public IP addresses, different networks and all of that, then go to the manage Jenkins, global system security. Okay. And if you scroll down, you will be seeing TCP for JNLP ports. This is now disabled. When you install your Jenkins, this option will be disabled. Just change it to random or fixed port. I have chosen random. I have chosen random. Remember, if you don't do this, 
on windows machine from linux to windows communication you will not be able to make it this is the first step are we good okay we will be using a jnlp a kind of uh, a technology for this right so you have to go to the configure global security and in this they will be seeing something called as agents and in that agents tcp for jnlp agents will be disabled change it to random and click on save that's the first step all right now let me go to the nodes now manage jenkins manage nodes right and now let me create a new node then it asks what is the kind of a node which you want generally now we are having only one kind of a node which is a permanent agent but earlier we used to have many options but you don't require that so let i am calling it as my laptop simple and i'm calling it as permanent agent then it will ask how many executors do you have based out of your build server or server's capacity you can say that my server can take 10 jobs in parallel then i'll be writing 10 executors but i am putting it as only one now but you can change the number depending on your hardware right so generally on the servers we'll put it as four or five depending on your build kind of approach now what is your remote root directory so on this machine in your laptop where is that you want to put your jenkins fold files so let me choose a stuff so let me choose d drive jenkins yeah so i'm creating a new folder called as jenkins and i would say that in this page it is d drive jenkins labels okay these labels are very important because these labels decide these labels decide the capabilities of your server and you will be sending a build based out of labels so if i label this as e-commerce okay so this means that my build server will take any job which has e-commerce within so that's why i'm labeling it as test my label might not be very great but i'll be i'm labeling it as test and now the option is use this node for anything or use it only for build jobs matching expressions so generally this is the most popular setting which we will use because every machine has a purpose every node has a purpose while learning you can use use this node as much as possible doesn't it will not affect anything but when you configure it in your enterprise world we will be using only for this because this machine is supposed to receive the builds only what it is supposed to do for example if some build comes where it it is supposed to do a linux build environment will, will it be able to do it no so that's a, that's the reason why we label it like that and now launch methods okay the the first option which you are seeing launch agent via java web start this you will not see if you are uh, if you have not enabled the tcp for jnlp ports you will be seeing only three options and in the, those three options will be the other three not the first option which is there okay so this option will be enabled only when we go to global security and just say tcp for jnlp agents is random or fixed if it is disabled you will not see this option so i am selecting this but there is one more stuff as i said let jenkins control windows slave as windows server this works very well within the network outside networks it will have some issues because it has to work with dcoms and uh, uh, dcom is one of the technology in in uh, windows world so it has to work with the older dcom technology and and there are many troubles around here so i'm using this if your machine was a linux machine then i would have done this launch slave agent host and whatever credentials which you want to get okay that is a very simple stuff so i'm interested in this part launch via web start and then what is your working directory okay so let me use as the same thing d drive jenkins okay and in the d drive jenkins there will be a folder which is created called as remoting which will consist of all of the information about this node how are they communicating and now the next thing is keep this node agents online as much as possible and there are something like two locations 
so you can tell where the locations of your tools are on that machine on that label you if you want to tell where the git is or where ms build is where java is where maven is you use this okay in our in my case i'm not doing it but actually if you want to tell that let us assume that git is in c program files uh git slash git dot exe just copy that paste uh, copy that path and put it over here maven is in c drive maven bin just give that path ms build is in c program files whatever it is so you copy those links and you put it over here because whenever jenkins is communicating to these machines it will also tell that you are you whatever you are building is on that path okay so we will definitely do this configuration for example if it is a maven on a windows machine maven can be in any folder maven can be in any folder and if you have not set m2 underscore home variable then so that's the there are some assumptions so always i would uh, prefer you to set this path okay i will tell you what will happen if you don't set this path also it doesn't mean that you cannot build but your build step will look awkward that's it fine i'm not interested in these tools anymore but if you you have to add this based out of what you are building so let me click on save now what it says is it connected if it is connected you will not be seeing this red stuff let me click on this then he says okay first thing is you are supposed to download this agent so let me click on this agent that the agent download has started okay so let me copy this go to the d drive paste it over here i have to rename it to agent.jar since i have two files with the same name it has came as off one okay you have downloaded the agent and now open the command prompt over here command prompt or java or powershell anything that makes sense to you so cmd run as administrator no man let us use powershell i want to avoid using of command prompt as much as possible anything is same for our case so d drive this is where we all have our agent right now go back to your ui are you seeing this command copy this command go into this directory and then okay so there are many cases where this can fail one is your firewall is not allowing to open the port just see the port number what it is trying to open so it uses a port number which is called as 55361 your antivirus software might stop communication to that so ensure that your java application is allowed through the firewall okay so that is the only case when it fails right ensure that the 55361 port is open okay so for example whenever you have a not an antivirus it might block thinking of this program as a virus because generally and malware work on ad hoc ports right they send communication so that's why they, they might be stopped so whenever you are doing in this exercise try it on the machine where you disable antivirus and firewall for some time okay for the time okay 10 15 minutes right now it says connected let me go over here okay back to list okay it is showing me one error saying that you have less space on uh, the free space because i am using uh, the driver that's fine that is just a uh, uh, what is a notification or kind of a warning to you it is not an error so did i add it you can add as many machines as you want so similarly whenever you are creating a linux machine you will give ssh username or password or you, you will give like what we have configured ss scp how we have done in the last class and you can add one more linux server this list can be as much long as you want right now what i do is yesterday i have, I have uh, basically taken one machine where it was capable of installing dot net so for the dot net if you want to use uh, ms build okay ms build is not a difficult thing but installation is hell it takes a lot of time so visual studio build tools 2017 if you go over here you will be seeing this section visual studio build tools you have to download this and then install this on the node 
install this on the node it will take a lot of time hell lot of time okay and then the only thing which you, have to, you need to tell is ms build and the path to a file which is called as sln or cs proj file mvn pom MV, mvn where will we do we'll we'll, let, we'll assume that there is a pom.xml file but in when you open a .NET project, okay, when you open a .NET project, I'll be just opening a simple .NET project, okay. Mm, I think this is it. Yeah. I'm interested in this path. I have taken a very simple .NET project. Okay. In any .NET project, generally, when you get into in this hello world, there is a file called as hello world dot SLN. You have to just tell MS build and path to this SLN file. MS build and path to this SLN file. Okay. And now let me look at the job configuration. Build. Are you seeing C, Windows, Microsoft, .NET Framework? This is a path of MS Build. But if I have configured in the tool section, I can directly use MS Build. Just now I've shown you the tool section, right? You open the tool section and give MS Build. Where is the path of the MS Build? Then there is no need for you. But if generally people tend to forget that. So that's why I've given the full path where the MS Build will be. Once you install that build tools, your MS Build will be here. Okay? And then see what is it I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to tell MS Build and I'm giving the path of the SLN file. That's it. This is your build step in .NET. Okay. Or in some cases, you might be seeing files like build.cmd or run.cmd and run them directly. Okay. Now, this is this is anyway a simpler step. I'm not really worried about this, but let us see something which I have done differently over here. Restrict this project to run on a label. This means that, okay. Let me configure the same project again for you so that it would be easy. Okay. Open link in new tab. I'll be majorly copy pasting the content because I don't want to rewrite it, but I'll tell you what are the main important things which you need to do. So freestyle project and let us tell that testing .NET or any, any stuff for that matter. You want to just send it the build to the other server. Okay. So select this. And now, this job, you want to build it on a particular combination. You want to build it on a particular machine. So how do you do that? Scroll down, and you would be seeing a section saying that restrict where this project can be run. So I want to run this project only when the label is .NET. OK? Fine? So similarly, if I want to build it on my laptop, I would be using a label called as test. Because while creating my laptop, I said that I will be using a label called as test. So whenever I use a label called as test, this job will come only to the machine which has this label. Right? So now let me go to the source code management. Git. So git path is anyway this. I want to just build this application. That's it. Okay, so this is simple, right? Yeah, and now branch is fine. I'll just say add build step. <clears throat> you will be seeing something called as MS build when you have a plugin called as MS build. I'm not installed it. I'll be go basically going, oh, yeah, you have it with MS build. For this, you need to have MS build plugin, but I want to execute a Windows batch command. So Windows batch command is MS build space SLN file. But the MS build, I can't use it directly because it is not added to the path variable. You have to give the full path. And MS build.exe is present in this location by default. It is present in, once you install that tool, it will be present in this location. So, fine. Okay. Now, if Maven path is not added, you will be giving the full path of the Maven. D drive, uh, Maven, and then in that MN, Maven dot sh, and then you have to give the full path. If you configure tools, there is no need for you to do this. And now, <clears throat> in this project, 
I'll be here, right? So where is the SLN file? In hello world. There is a file called as hello world dot. <coughs> there is a file called as hello world dot SLN. I have to give this path. So how do I write this path over here? Since this is a Windows slaves, I'll be writing hello world slash hello world dot SLN. That's it. Now save let me click on build now it looks very fast because that machine is huge and both are in same network so if you see it has built and the build was successful it has warnings but it doesn't have any errors right and if you want to archive the artifacts, you need to know the path where uh, basically the stuff would be. So generally when you build the project, <clears throat> your exe path will be here. So I have archived the artifact. I have archived the artifact. Now let me go over here. <clears throat> this is the artifact dot exe file. In, in the Java, we used to get var files. Here we get exe or dll files. Similarly, whenever you are building Node.js packages, you might get tar files or zip files. Doesn't matter. Any language is the same. Okay. Here, the only thing that might sound new to you is I am sending this build on a different machine. So shall I? Shall we send some build on to our uh, <clears throat> our laptop? Yes. So Jenkins new item test. Laptop, okay. I have to restrict, right? Because my laptop node has a label. So what is the label? Okay. So then it will tell that how many nodes do you have with this label? So in reality, you might have many. So it might go to one of the server, which is free, right? So. Now let me go to the build step. I'll not be writing a very heavy stuff. Let me execute the Windows batch command. Okay. And then just say set. Okay. And then nothing. Echo testing. Right. Okay. If I want, I can copy files also. In uh, Windows uh, directory, I can use CP or uh, copy commands, move commands and all of that. I don't want to. Let me just stop it at this. I have written some command there. The whole point of interest is whether that command works or not. Is, I'm not interested. I'm, I'm interested in whether the job gets scheduled on my laptop or not. So let me click on build now. Oh, node is offline. Manage Jenkins. Oh, my laptop is showing as offline. Disk space is too much low. Man, okay. Okay, now is the build happening? That is a warning it has stopped. I said that don't worry about that warning. All right. So let me go to the logs of this. So I've executed this command and this set command will show you all the environment variables. That's it. Nothing more than that. So these are all the environment variables which I have on my laptop. So I have m2 underscore home. I have Jenkins underscore server. I have these are all the environment variables which I wanted to display and now the job was finished successfully Okay, in reality, you might be using some build statements over here I have used Linux uh, plain Windows statements, but this is the information about my laptop if you want you can see see users quality thought Okay, so the build which I have scheduled from a AWS machine has been 
connected to my laptop and I'm able to do something here. Right? So now what would happen over here is in the D drive, you'll have a Jenkins folder remoting. This will consist of all the information about the communications and workspace test laptop. This is the workspace folder which is generally created. But we have not done any git in it. We have not cloned anything, so it is not showing us anything. But if I have basically build a standard project, you might be seeing the code over here in this direct. Simple. So can I add multiple machines to one Jenkins server? So in reality, your Jenkins server is not supposed to build anything. Jenkins server will build will build only when all the nodes are busy. All the other nodes are busy. That is the only case when we want our Jenkins server to build something. Otherwise, we will be scheduling all of our jobs to some other servers because in reality, you will have servers per team. So e-commerce servers, e-commerce test servers. So you'll be using that labels. And that step which I have said that run this job only on a particular label is very important. Otherwise, it might go to any server. Okay. So in reality, that will not be the case. You will have restricted servers where the build is supposed to happen because build environment is very critical. Okay. But if you are using generic tools, like for example, I want to... Uh, clean the temp directories, clean the temp folder, all right? So for that, it's okay. Yeah, so that's the whole point. Fine. So am I, am I able to connect my Jenkins to multiple servers now? Yeah, I have tried basically Linux to Windows. Try Linux to Linux. So in, if you want to try Linux to Linux, what you are supposed to do is I'll just show you the basic UI options so that you can uh, fill them. Okay. Go to manage nodes. Okay. Just say new node. Okay. Give my Linux permanent agent. Okay. Tell what is the executors. Okay. Remote directory. So home slash Ubuntu slash Jenkins. Whatever, whatever is your stuff. So linux and now here launch slave agents via ssh now basically whenever you see you will be getting uh, the whole commands over here right so there are multiple ways of executing them launch agents via ssh okay so this is what i would prefer for me ssh is the most simpler option so i'll let us assume that my host stuff is this 192.168 10.11 okay so if i want to give usernames and passwords i'll be adding the username and passwords over here okay add username and password and then i'll be using the known verification strategy just click on save if you want to give two locations you give it now what would happen is the linux machine will be connected to uh, from jenkins server using the ssh configurations which you have been done and now all the scheduling is as normal Okay. In the case of Windows, the communication was from Node to Windows. Whenever you are using general JNLP, that is the case. But whenever you are using SSH, it's the other way around. Your server has to access the Node. That's it. So, this is To be very specific, I have done this step yesterday itself. SSH copy ID, SSH key gen, just give username. All of the stuff will be done. Alright? Okay. So, this is the other way of looking, looking at it. So every operating system, you can add it as a node. So it doesn't, it is not necessary that in Jenkins, we can use uh, only Windows servers or only Linux servers. You can have all sorts of combinations. Okay. Because your Jenkins server, actually, which you are accessing from the UI is the server which doesn't do any builds. You will be sending all the builds to your build servers, which are nodes. Fine. So this is why Jenkins is called as a distributed build server because it is capable of sending builds to other nodes for execution. That's the whole point. Fine? Yes? Okay. Now let me look at questions. Auto scaling servers when performance is more, can we scale? For that, you have to take the rescue of uh, uh, cloud. Jenkins cannot do auto scaling because Jenkins is not about auto scaling. Right, so me server like uh, cloud low unte, then you can do it. Then you can do it. Okay, in every node, Jenkins is required. No, on the laptop, did I install Jenkins? 
the only thing which you require in the case of jnlp is you need to have java there and you need to have agent.jar downloaded you don't need jenkins to be installed no okay now the last stuff for today okay already 8 30 right let us just wait so that we'll be able to um, uh, so that tomorrow i can work only on cloud devops that's the whole point i don't want to bring in uh, again these steps or tomorrow okay so basically there is uh, one important stuff which is called as configure global security okay so in the jenkins what are the permissions which users will have that will be mandated by this section that will be mandated by this section for example you want to give specific permissions to specific users you can go with matrix based security so whenever you select matrix based security you will get a huge list of what a user can do and what a user cannot do so you can add a list of users over here in this case you are not seeing many users because i have only one user in this machine but actually whenever you log in you will be seeing list of all of your users if you create multiple users then per user you can select what is that he can do and what is that he cannot do okay sometimes we don't want users to have jenkins level security but we will be interested in projects okay so basically per project what is the security which you want to give that is something which you can do and in your organizations okay now i am using jenkins own database because the user is maintained by jenkins but in your organization they will be using either the third option or the fourth option if your company has predominantly linux based users they will be connecting to the linux if they have active directory they will be connecting to the lab server so everyone who has a login into your account can log in into this machine they might not have access they might not have authorization but they will be able to log in okay so windows based authentication this is anyway the, this is this is not not very critical but yeah it jenkins has its own user management that's the whole point which i want to tell most important stuff than that people have been asking me about jenkins cl right so so for the people who want to control jenkins from command line for the people who want to control jenkins from command line download this jar file whenever you log in into jenkins and get into this section you will be seeing then cli over here okay and you can create jobs you can copy jobs you can build jobs from cli also will we do it no we'll never do it because builds are not automated it is it is only when you want to take it to the next level then you will do it but still it is not a very difficult thing i'll, I'll just try to show you what so take this jar copy it onto some directory let us use d directory itself d drive let me open powershell okay now the first thing which you need to do is you need to this is the first command blindly copy paste java minus jar the file which you have downloaded and http colon your jenkins url and then you are asking for help it will tell what are all the different possible things which you can do what are all the different possible things which you can do okay so you must authenticate to the server i have not given the username and password so how can i give username and password basically if i am not wrong it is hyphen hyphen user i think user quality and what is the passwords yeah let me write as password if it is not wrong it will anyway complain right a password no such command hyphen of a user yeah it is yeah. single hyphen wow oh boy let me go to the documentation okay okay
user name and password okay okay man em em miss cheyindi ikkada that is all fine but this is this is not this is not the stuff which i'm looking at let me let me do one thing yeah this is a better stuff build ah uh, no such thing called as job so what is the build which will have anyway it will fail because i am not authenticated all right so then dot net no such job called as dot net it is not authenticated guys oh, man pardon me no no i have done it enta vayasu vacha app cheyinandi led led i am just i am just on a funny note i am saying okay yeah okay uh, how can this బాబా ఏది నో కమాండ్ అంటుంది అది లాగిన్ ఈస్ ఫైన్ బట్ అట్లీస్ట్ ఇట్ షుడ్ గివ్ మీ సమ్ ఎరర్స్ రైట్ సో దిస్ ఈస్ దీస్ ఆర్ ద కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఎరర్స్ విచ్ ఇస్ లాగిన్ ఇస్ ద నెక్స్ట్ థింగ్ బట్ అట్లీస్ట్ సీ వాట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ హియర్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ టు టెల్ మీ వాట్ ఈస్ అ వార్నింగ్ యా ఎస్ఎస్హెచ్ కీ యూజర్ yeah there is something over here oh man let me do one thing let me just make a note of them and and uh, I'll, i'll give you some commands man okay what and in the login jesa na nanni id idru anta adagaledu i think i have done something else okay whatever it is so basically i'll try to give you some document of some commands where how you can give authorize by usernames and passwords okay i think it is uh, basically it should not be this much complicated because yesterday i was able to run the job but the only difference was there i was trying to logging in from the same machine which i have which i have jenkins server so it was mostly like local host but in case it should have, let us let us look into it it's fine okay so this this is just even though there is a cli i have not seen even seen even a real time use case where it is useful not even a single case let me tell you what is the reason in jenkins we either configure automated builds which happen on schedule which happen on schedule ante gantaku oka saro rendu gantlaku oka saro or basically we would trigger it manually in both of these cases this cli is not useful this cli is useful only when you want to get some information when you want to see what are the jobs that are running what are the queue items okay but not a very useful item uh, when it when it comes to jenkins cli because jenkins we use it from ui primarily because we want to see all of them right but in many narrow cases you use it but actually rather than cli if you want to build any knowledge this is more sensible remote api okay because this api can be used basically let us assume that once you uh, want to get the information of the jenkins and then you write code not cli commands okay so for example if you want to access this jenkins you have python api api you have rest api and you can do all of this basic stuff from here so this would be a most useful stuff if you really want to automate it not cli 
but CLL, I'll, I'll share you some comments. Let me see what are the comments. Those are the last comments which I have tried in my office yesterday. Let me see what is that I am doing here as a mistake and uh, there as a difference. Uh, now, so let me speak slightly about uh, the the cloud DevOps which we are going to cover, so that we so that we are clear about what it is. That so in cloud there are two different options. One is building the code, storing the code, and deploying the code. Okay, cloud has deployment tools also. So for example, uh, you have something like code deploy in AWS. Okay, so that's our we're using. For building, we will be using cloud. So, for example, I don't install Maven. I will not have any slave. What I will do is I would configure something called as code build in AWS, and from Jenkins, I'll be calling the code build. Okay. So, what Jenkins will do is it will call AWS machine, and it will say that okay, this is the code which the user wants to build. Can you just build it? That's it. Okay. That is what we would do. Deployment. I don't want to discuss on code deploy because we learn the other ways of deployment. We learn the other ways of deployment. Code deploy, I'm not really encouraging it because it re still relies on shell scripts. Still relies on shell scripts. Okay. Similarly, in the on the Windows world, we're deploying one uh, .NET application to some Azure service. That's what we'd be doing. We'd be trying to do. So these are the two use cases which we'll be trying to do. And these two use cases are not mandatory for the people who are interested who want to understand how the same DevOps works on cloud, you can. But for the people who think it is already enough, yeah, interview you look cloud DevOps in our agreement. In the kind of cloud DevOps is chargeable. It is for every build which you do, you have to pay some amount to uh, to the cloud vendors. So that's that's becoming too much hectic is is what I see when when we have these amount of builds. So for example, for every one hour, if you want to build for 10 projects, it doesn't make sense to go to cloud so it will be costlier okay but just since there is an option let's get it so i'll be covering uh, one use case in aws and one use case in azure for that okay so uh, we can take any application let us take something which makes sense to us okay so for that what we need to do is in in the in the case of aws we'll be writing some extra files okay so there will be a notation which i'll be writing called as yaml okay and for the people who have joined new yaml might might be a very new format but don't worry we'll be learning it very soon when we uh, start on in packer and terraform primarily we'll be using yaml or json formats so that's the reason I'll, I'll be showcasing you how what are the different files which you will write and tomorrow i'll be covering one use case in uh, aws and one use case in azure i have not decided to what are those use cases sir. by the end of the day i'll decide okay so and let us run through the Okay, so that you can write one point in your resume saying that I can do DevOps on cloud also. That's it. That is a whole benefit of this approach. All right. But no one is using build engines on cloud. That is for sure because they're they are costlier than what we normally have on our physical machines. And my MVN package is in Pratisari, AWS will double gutter. So that doesn't make sense, right? That's that's the whole point. Fine. Now, last stuff. Uh, how to push git code to Jenkins how to push why do you need to push first of all are you asking about notification uh, these words are very important right push is when you send the git uh, git code from your local machine to the server and by the way Jenkins is not a git server so uh, what i believe i can i can think of it as whenever i push something to the git code how can i trigger jenkins job if that is your question it is it will be answered tomorrow okay jenkins nen git log push chesanu git log push chesin prathi sari jenkins call ay pol the job in jenkins has to be triggered okay that is a hooking concept which i'll be covering tomorrow but if that is not your question and if you want to push the code to the jenkins or from jenkins jenkins is not about that we don't push push code to Jenkins or from Jenkins because pushing code is a manual job and it has to be done manual. Okay. So if your question is if do I want to trick whenever I push to the Jenkins Git server, do I want to Jenkins uh, or uh, build a Jenkins job? Okay. I have a job called as day build. Whenever some developer does push, I want to trigger a Jenkins job. Yes. Okay. For that we'll be looking a hook and I'll be creating a small hook tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. Fine. 
thanks then so that's what i had for the day and uh, basically i want you to complete till this point meek interview lo ikkada varike avasaram whatever i have discussed till today is very important tomorrow is just an optional stuff and tomorrow what uh, the other thing which i what i would be doing is i would be sharing you some other use cases which you can try which you can try okay the first thing which i want you to do is build a pipeline for open mrs project it is it is quite a huge project it takes lot of time sonar cube on that artifactory on that so if you are able to do this good okay then we can try uh, the only difference in uh, my use cases will be only this we have looked at java pipeline right maven java pipeline okay my other use cases will be gradle java pipeline ms build net pipeline okay and uh, node js pipeline python pipeline that's it these are the other use cases antaku minchi emi levu okay adi e application vaadalanadu nenu nenu vetiki meeku easy application isthan ante that's the only difference the other exercises which i am supposed to which i want you to look at okay basically are them okay so we have not discussed about gradle in the class but can't we build gradle how you will see how do i build code from gradle right how do i install gradle and on the jenkins machine you will be installing gradle and giving access to that that's it done on the node there is no need to for you to worry about all of this on the node on which user you are accessing it you will be giving access that's it that's how simple it is fine yeah how to get notification from jenkins yeah thanks for reminding me that okay so i don't do it in the class and i want you to do it on your own because uh, i'll show you what are the different steps which is which are which are to be done so everyone has a gmail account right so for this sample you can try gmail actually you will be configuring your office server okay so all the slave build results are stored on master target folder i am not sure please check it i am not sure and endu kandana ante i want you to look at it i have already shown that on the slave there is a workspace folder now i want you to go into the master and see whether you are seeing the workspace there also because you have a jenkins server login into that we know jenkins home directory login into that and see whether you are seeing the same workspace or not okay if you are seeing the same workspace yes if you are not seeing the same workspace no is answer i don't want to answer it okay fine okay slave nodes need to have maven slave nodes need to have whatever is required for building your code slave nodes need to have the tools for building whatever jenkins job it is so for example if you are building dotnet it needs ms build if you are building java it, using maven it needs maven so that's that's the whole point so in here blindly follow this approach okay so it is already documented over here in the post build actions you will have something called as send an email notification that's what you have to do after this so then you might need might need to tell when do you want to send an email every time or whenever the build fails that is what you need to configure but remember whenever you do this you might get a notification from uh, google saying that some unless uh, some what do you say uh, someone is trying to access your accounts don't panic with that that is a jenkins which is trying to access it just na pudu evaro man account hack chesinattu ottu gmail nundi mail but actually it is not gen it is not someone else getting into it because generally uh, your servers are in us right it will show on the map location some us location saying that someone from here is trying to connect to your uh, uh, gen or gmail account that is nothing but your jenkins server okay so just follow these steps if you are on gmail the only difference in the office is i am giving an smtp details of gmail server over here yes in your office you have a different smtp credentials that's it that's the feedback system you don't change anything since we might not have that enterprise mail ids with us let us use gmail for that purpose okay if you want to use any other uh, uh, 
any other mailing system you can use but for that you need to know what are your smtp credentials that's it okay and for the for the people who don't want to even use this there is an open smtp of G google itself which allows you to send 10 or 15 mails per day so you can use that anonymous gmail uh, stuff okay but that that is not guaranteed it might send or it might not send mails but this is bit more decent approach okay so for the people who want to send mails from jenkins please follow this document it is already documented all right okay can we get jenkins book soft it will be shared uh, uh, to you it will be shared to you is it not shared already shared oh so for the people who didn't got the book please do write to satish and i am also going to tell him immediately after this class saying that for the people over the online you will be getting a soft copy and for the people over here i think you can uh, i'm not sure whether they are going to xerox shops or not. i do not speak satish a long time about it but i've seen some books being printed i'm not sure what it is all about speak with satish he will tell you the stuff yeah okay fine then so mouthful of discussions right we have started from the place from simple virtual machine creation git and now we are speaking about building the code and and uh, making releases and deploying it onto some systems and all of that stuff right very important stuff okay so for the people especially uh, who are looking into devops there is no devops if there is no ci Jenkins Manakadra, Jenkins developer like any tester like an Kunavalaki. Jenkins no Udan Kunta as a new Jog Melid. Okay, for the people who don't want to basically look at Jenkins, you don't have DevOps at all because there is some system which is automating the stuff which is demanding a huge automation for us. Right? So Jenkins is as important as Linux to everyone, irrespective of whether you are an admin. I am I'm from SAP, I do, it doesn't matter. So CI is very, very important. Please look, go through it. If CI and Linux, if you fail in your interview questions, there will not be questions on Docker, Chef, Ansible, and anything. We will give you the lead. That's a convention. That's that's what people look at. So please focus on these things. Book share, yes, sir. Gandarkini Jenkins. Book, this coach, okay. For the classroom people, there, is, there are books over here. Speak with Satish and get it. Uh, okay. And any other. Sunday, 6.32, 8.00 work, SL, sir. 8.32, 10.30 work, how do you install it? CLA, okay. Okay, so on Sunday, we are not having a class, right? Okay, so on Sunday from 6.32, 8. 8, 8. 8 o'clock, we have Agile classes. For the people who wanted to understand what that sprint is, how do we make releases, so we are going to have Agile classes on 6, 30, Sunday, 6.32, 8. Okay, from 8 to from 8.30 to 10.30, okay, uh, Hadoop installation will be shown to you, okay. So for the people who want to automate Hadoop installation, the CLI approach will be shown, okay. You can take that as one of the exercise items for automating that in Chef, Shell, shell Script, and uh, uh, Ansible, all right. So... Hadoop installation, I will I will not say that it is required for everyone other the DevOps That is just one more activity. So if you know it, you can write one word saying that Hadoop administration or Hadoop installation using Chef or Ansible, which will give some weight to your resume. These are just small points. Sometimes one point might add a weight to your resume. That's the whole point. So on Sunday from 6:30 to 10:30, we do have classes. 6:30 to 8 is agile, and 8:30 to 10:30 is Hadoop discussion. So uh, links will be sent to people over the web. Yeah. yeah. For the online people, Jenkins book. Yeah. Books cannot be sent online, right? So that's why soft copies are being sent. Yeah. So, sorry for that. <laughs> Basically, what is, I'll tell you what has happened in, uh, in, in my engineering. You know projects, right? So in engineering, uh, since my HOD knew that I would be able to code, I was given four uh, poets with me for uh, project. The project which we were trying to do was core banking at that moment. So the Viva came and, and the lecturer said that he has seen my name on the top. He would said that I will start from the bottom. Then the first question which he has asked is, why do you use this project? The project at that time was core banking in our graduation days. So one of the team members says, using this project, you can download money from a computer. 
uh, so I, i got the same stuff sorry for that my old memories not your problem right okay so you will be getting a soft copy if you stay in hyderabad come and collect it right if not i think uh, it will be difficult yeah okay so that's the whole stuff hadoop administration i'm 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 uh, assuming for the people who know ansible it is mandatory right nechukondi oka point add chesukochu who have not finished uh, if you have if you like it you just come it but for the people who have finished ansible or chef please do come to that classes try it out cheyagopaina em avadu sagam varaku elthe chaala telisinattu maaku right and uh, they, if i am not wrong they might be using centos servers for that so for the people who have been trying uh, red hat and centos stuff uh, they will be it will be a useful one fine thanks guys so that's what i had and uh, we'll meet tomorrow and uh, we'll do we have a material for aws and azure azure i don't have material man so i am demotivated after seeing azure's documentation because everything is done by microsoft so if you if i want to give a book what i can do is i can go there download it as pdf and share it with you okay i don't want to do that for aws for some of the topics i want to i have written it for for example for ec2 uh, for uh, rds for some of the services which i have done and it would be shared to you okay but not i have not written for everything because they have a decent documentation but devops tools there is documentation but documentation will not tell why to use and how to use whereas aws and azure documentation tells the purpose as well as how to use so that's why um, my books are more strong on devops that's the only reason right okay thanks then bye